You're listening to What She Said on Canada Talks. So good to be along with you today and in studio. I'm Sharon Caddy with Kate Wheeler. And this uh, topic we have coming up, this is one that, boy, I I know a little bit about this one. <laughs> when it comes to separation and divorce, there are so many things that we uh, take into account. Obviously, we've talked, we've talked a great deal on the show about the financial aspects, the psychological aspects. Um, but when... It, Probably one of the touchiest things that happens is when you become ready to enter into another relationship. This is not the easiest part uh, of the entire process. And joining us now in studio is Natalie Boutet, family lawyer, and welcome to What She Said. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. So when we are in this situation where we are divorced, or some, I guess for some people separated after a long period mm -hmm. of time, and we... We come to that point where we're ready to think about entering into another relationship. Um, it can be really tricky when there are children involved. Yeah. So, um, of course, everyone wants to go on with their lives. Everyone wants to be loved and cherished and embraced. And uh, that's really, really important after you've separated. You've probably gone through a long period of not feeling that, not feeling attractive and cherished and embraced and uh, people want to feel that and it's really really uh, important uh, in our society to feel like that. Uh, the problem is is that there are children involved uh, normally or often and they don't have the same uh, reaction, they don't have the same need, they, they are loved and cherished by their parents and um, it's, it's a, an adult need, it's not a child need. So my focus then when I work with, with uh, separating couples, uh, oftentimes they come back to me because there's problems when one of them starts dating. So I hear all of the problems uh, that can happen if uh, a new relationship is not handled properly after divorce. So when the, when the parents have become two individuals and are thinking about, do you find a difference between how the man in the couple approaches the new dating situation? situation versus the mom? I wouldn't say so. No? No. Mm. It's, are they both the same? Because I, 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 don't, I don't know. I've been married yeah. for a long time and I haven't yeah. had, to, had to go through this. But among friends, I found that women seem to be more reluctant to yeah. introduce um, a, you know, a, a new mm -hmm. friend to their children than men are. Yeah, I, I wouldn't be able to say mm -hmm. that that's you know, that I've noticed that, but mm -hmm. uh, maybe that's the case See, in, some, in some families. And I, for speaking from my perspective, it, it came down to, I guess, where, you know, the dad right. is not living in the home with the children all the time. And yes. So it's easier right. to get into a relationship because you don't, you, the children are not there all the time. Well, let's talk about that. So yeah. uh, uh, many, many things to consider. The age of the children, how often the children are with you, how often you are alone, uh, able to go on with your life. So obviously, if you are the parent that has the children the majority of the time, you're going to have to find strategies to mm -hmm. go on with your life and start dating. Um, I don't want this interview to be about me, but I can share my personal experience. Mm -hmm. When my husband passed away, when my daughter was two, I became a single parent. And I didn't have another parent to offload or, you know, take care of my child when I wanted to do my own thing. So uh, my ability to go out dating was different than if you have a situation where the other parent is also available. So so whether you have the, the majority of the care versus mm -hmm. a little bit of the care makes a huge difference in how you can go on with your life. So if you have the majority of the care, um, what I did is I consulted with professionals. I, I had uh, several meetings with, meetings with a psychologist to understand what would be the impact of uh, me, you know, going out and me uh, bringing someone into my unit with my daughter. Um, and, and, and then with the advice of a professional, I worked my way through the dating stage of my life. Uh, that's an excellent idea. Uh, another idea is sometimes a separated couple um, finds harmony and calm after the separation and they become friends and it's, it's, a, it's a good um, holding pattern. Mm -hmm. And the holding pattern is reversed or tipped when someone brings in a new partner. So another um, suggestion is 
um, it may feel awkward or it may be uh, weird for someone to hear what I'm going to say, but if there's a way for the dating person to talk to the ex about this situation before the kids are even introduced in the mix, that will go a long way. What should you say to that dating person, your ex? You say, I, I, you know, I, I love the friendship that we have and it has nothing to do with you and, and I want to be super careful with our children and how they're introduced but I have someone in my life and I, I want you to know about it if you want to meet the person you know if, if it's possible for the for them to meet even before the children are introduced to the person that would be a really evolved mature way of handling the situation you are listening to what she said on Sirius XM Radio, uh, Canada Talks, Channel 167. And we have with us in studio Natalie Boutet, who is a family law lawyer. And you can call in if you have any questions. The number is 1-855-958-8255. Now, Natalie, I, I understand that you're a pioneer in the field of something I've never heard of. Yeah. Neurofamily law. Explain what that yeah, is. Yeah, so um, I've taken um, an interest in understanding how we work as humans and how the brain works, and I've taken uh, courses on uh, the intersection of uh, understanding how the brain works and apl applying it to negotiation. How are we when we negotiate? What's important to us? Uh, what tips us in one way or the other? What triggers us to be more defensive, etc.? So I've uh, written extensively, and I and I give uh, seminars uh, to to professionals, not uh, yet to clients. But uh, I'm, I have a keen interest in, in in educating people in my profession on how to be better equipped to deal with humans, because we uh, have such an important role to play in the lives of people. They come to us in a very shattered. Uh, uh, state they are depleted, they are depleted emotionally, f financially, they're scared. Uh, all of their emotions have a strong impact on how they're going to behave during their work with us. So my interest is, is um, understanding who they are, w what is going on for them when they work with us, and how can we as professionals uh, work better uh, while we understand who they are and, and what triggers them and, and what makes it more difficult for them. And, and was it your own experience that prompted you to um, study this? Yes and no. Uh, with my, I have, I'm in a new relationship now and with my new life partner we uh, wanted to explore um, we wanted to explore best practices. What, what can we do for separating families? Uh, we were in a good place. We had uh, you know lots of uh, uh, energy to give back to our society. So we looked around and, and wanted to find uh, best practices, and we realized there were uh, lots of really good initiatives out there, but uh, nothing that was really earth-shattering that could help separating families. Um, so we actually created a system based on neuroplasticity, and it's 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 been offered to families in crisis and individuals in crisis, and it's quite effective. So that's where that's where it all started is, is a desire to look around uh, in the world to see what we can bring to our society to help uh, separating families. It's, it's very, uh, I'm, I'm not saying anything that you guys don't know already or the listeners don't know, but it's, it's very scary for people to be going through a trauma. Not just a separation, but a separation is very traumatic. There's a lot of fear, there's a lot of guilt, there's a lot of uncertainty, and as a society, I don't know if we were really still after all these years, I don't know if we know how to help these families. It's important, though, that you address it as a separating family because we often focus on it's a separating husband and wife couple, yes, but it's right, so right, much right. affects the it's children. It's a family, and the problem is, is if you look at the um, statistics, uh, people who separate uh, and go on to uh, date and, and recouple, they have a much higher chance of divorcing again after their second relationship, and they have a higher chance again after their third relationship. So when you think about it, you, it's not changing partners that's going to make a difference. Mm -hmm. It's normally changing who you are. Like, what is it about you that didn't work in this relationship? And we tend to focus on, the, it's the other spouse's problem. I've married the wrong spouse. And then you marry the wrong spouse again, and you marry the wrong spouse again. So we started to look at them and say, okay, what, what is it about the individual that is not able to create the kind of relationship that is fulfilling and loving and intimate? 
We are going to take a break here at What She Said on Sirius XM Channel 167. When we come back, we're going to talk to uh, Natalie Boutet about um, how your needs differ from your children's needs and some other advice right. that she's going to give for uh, families that are going through separations and people that are looking to date again. Stay with us. We'll, we'll be right the break, Natalie. Uh, Kate mentioned we, we need to sort of focus in on how needs differ. D different needs for the, the new couple and the kids that are involved. Right. So um, the children certainly have different needs uh, in terms of the family unit. They, they've gone through a separation. They're in two houses, even if it's not you know equal uh, sharing of the residences, they will go back and forth. It's very tiring. Uh, and they really cherish the time that they have with their parents. It's really, really important to them. And then you introduce another person so that the children don't really want another person. They don't, it's not that they don't care, if they really want you to be happy, but they have different needs. They want to be. Uh, they want to have some normalcy, they want to have peace, they want to have calm. And it's, it's, it takes something for the children to get used to a new person. First mm -hmm. of all, if, if the children are a bit younger, um, they will uh, wonder why you're taking time away from them to be with another person. So you need to factor that into the frequency of your seeing the other person or the timing of seeing the other person. Um, if it's a feuding relationship with your former partner, then for sure the former partner will try to, it's not out of viciousness necessarily, but the person will be nervous. Are you trying to replace that parent with the mm -hmm. new person? Or, right, so it becomes confusing for the kids if they hear things, if they, uh, if, if another parent denigrates the new partner, how do they, how do the kids uh, interact with the new partner? Are they supposed to be loyal? And if they're loyal to the new partner, is that um, a strike against the other parent? So you mean do they, they, they might feel guilty? They about de I definitely feel guilty. They don't know where uh, their loyalties should be displayed. So they feel uh, if they like your, they new, like the your new, partner, new partner, then they feel that they're sort of being traitors to their right. other parents. And but if they don't like the new partner, then they're traitors to the parent who's trying to date. Yeah, that's it's very true. complicated. And even if they like the new partner, there there can be that resentment that you are, as you mentioned off the top, that uh, that that person is taking time away from For them. Sure. It's taking that uh, time of their parent of away course. from them. How does one temper that resentment that you can feel from your children? Well, um, we started the conversation before the break. I think what's really important is to um, is to take your time. Uh, not rush into another relationship and certainly not rush taking your time away from your kids to be in the other relationship. Uh, another really important uh, aspect of this is, is there any way, uh, and, I'm, I, and I'm asking people to be mature and to rise above the emotions of the, of the, of the pre-separation, separation and post-separation, because it's very difficult for people to get back and be um, respectful for one another sometimes. But I'm asking people to really rise above all of the emotions and try to have a conversation with your former partner about your dating. I'm, I'm now interested in dating, for example. You don't have to say, I have someone, but I'm going to start dating or I'm going to, or I have someone in my life that I just met. And that is the, like, to have the buy in of the other person is really smart. Why wouldn't you do it? Now, I know, because I've been doing this work for 25 years, I know it's not always possible because sometimes it's so negative that the, the relationship between the former spouses continues to be negative for a long time after separations. So it's not always possible. But, but, but I'm, I'm actually going one step further. I'm, I'm going to say to even those families where it's still a very negative years later, there's always space for maturity. And it takes one person to rise above and to say, I'm going to do it the way that I would like it done upon me. If my ex was starting to date someone, I would want to know if they're, if the kids, if my children would spend time with another caregiver or person, I would want to know. I would want to know the person. I would want to know where they come from. I'd like to meet them. And so you're right. saying it's actually a good idea uh, to introduce the new partner to your ex before they meet the children. I think it'd be great. 
wouldn't wouldn't it make you feel Be better awkward. if they can? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes and no, right? Like of course it's awkward, but but the but the aftermath of not doing it is worse. Mm-hmm. And the reality Oftentimes. that that yeah. is that person is always going to, as long as there are children involved, there there are, that person is always going to be a part of that unit in one That's way or the, another. Yeah. And eventually those children grow up, and there are going to be weddings and everything else, and that person is going to be present. Yes. Well, you hope. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah. Now, what about holidays? You got some. You, you say we, we need, or people need to maybe lower their expectations it's for what tough. holidays. Yeah, holidays are very complicated. There's a lot of information on the internet, actually, lots of uh, psychological studies and social studies on the impact of children, on uh, of uh, parents um, really fighting really hard to get the kids at Christmas or other important religious times. Uh, there's even a, a website where children are interviewed about their parents' um, desires to have them around Christmas time. And, and and this is for for all of you out there who think that the kids really want to be with you for Christmas and it's super important to them. It is not as important to them as having harmony in the family. Mm-hmm. So my request to parents out there is... Don't sweat the small stuff. The kids don't care if it's the 25th in the morning that they wake up in your house or the 26th. They don't. They tell us crying during these studies that they don't care. So it becomes really complicated when you date someone with kids and you have a parenting schedule that says you have the kids on these days and these days and your family has a different schedule. Of course you want the beautiful, happy family to all meet together for Christmas, but that's your desire. Mm -hmm. It's not, it's hard. And then you're asking your ex to agree to change your schedule because your new person has a different schedule. Now you can see how complicated it gets, Mm -hmm. and of course there's resentment and it's complicated. (coughs) So what do I say is take a step back, really look at what's possible. The other thing that makes kids crazy, by the way, it has nothing to do with dating. But it's the chopping up of the holiday schedule. It's so complicated and scheduled to the, to the minute. Parents count how many minutes the kids are with them and with the other person. And at 12.01 on the 25th, they have to be with the other parent. And they're across town. So the kids have to rush out of their pajamas and get into that car so they can be at 12.02 in the other family. Right? So people have to take a step back and really think about what are the logistics? Would you like to be yanked out of your pajama opening your presents so that you can be with grandma at two o'clock? I'm nothing against grandmas. I love grandmas. It's, you know, <laughs> extended families are super important. But it's so hard for the kids. So again, it's measuring what you think is important versus what makes sense for these little people. I think even for families who have not gone through separation and divorce, where right. maybe it's a new family and uh, one or one or both of the people in the, in the partnership right. are, are holding on to old traditions, and we must be with. I think right. everyone needs to reassess how mm-hmm. they handle the holidays yeah. once there are children involved. Right. Because I've seen friends of mine who, up until the time their their kids are teenagers, are still doing that kind of scheduling, and they're in a they're in a marriage that's not separating, right. but they're still trying to find time to go to their parents' house right. and their parents' house, it's and those kids are dragged around. And then when your kids get older, there's boyfriends and girlfriends oh, and yes. a lot of their parents. Yeah. I I mean, uh, my daughter Sophie managed to have, uh, we had Easter on Saturday right. uh, because um, there were other other issues in, involved, um, but she, she was had a big Easter lunch with our family and then went to her boyfriend's family for dinner. I mean, she could hardly roll out of bed the next day. <laughs> she was like, I ate way too much. But when, yeah. so, I mean, things change normally, like yes. normally in a family when other people become involved yeah. and the kids grow up and they want to then spend time with their family you have hyphenated holidays right it's like, so yeah, true. Uh, yeah it's so yeah. true uh, we actually have uh, Gwen from Atlanta has written in on Facebook and she says never date a divorced man his ex-wife will always bo- be more important to him in his mind and she will despise you it's just a really really bad idea okay well that's interesting um um that speaks to the issue that we were talking about, which is how do you prepare the field 
for the introduction of a new partner. If you're not doing it properly, there will be resentment or may be resentment uh, from the ex. Now, in terms of understanding the relationship between former uh, spouses, of course they're important to each other because they had children together and they it's it's very fragile their post separation relationship and they've been fighting so much before and during the legal before the separation and during the legal separation process that they're exhausted the last thing they want is to have fights again in the future so any new person that comes into this mix must understand the fragility and the importance of keeping things stable and if the new partner wants to come in and be very respectful of that they will be fine it's when it's when there's lack of respect or um, s things that are not said or not done respectfully that it creates problems. Well, further to, to Gwen's comment, though, by a certain age, it's hard if you are back in the dating world to find a man who is not divorced, who is single. Right. And so you, we do have to tackle these issues and, and understand and, and learn how psychologically to, to maneuver in the world right. through these waters. It's uh, it's tricky. I, I don't know that... It's very unique. In many in many instances, the ex is never going to like you. That's true. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, I know some families that uh, are dating, and they're waiting for the kids to go off to university before they're going to move in together, right? So mm -hmm. you have to make accommodations. Uh, it's not a perfect world. It, there's a lot of personalities and dynamics involved, and, yeah, you have to be flexible. And there's also uh, three sets of families, I know, that waited right. until the kids went to university to tell them they were getting divorced. Right. That's that's the wow. that's happens a lot as well. So, yeah. Well, Natalie Boutte, um, you have a website. Do you want to tell people uh, how yep. they can find so out about you? I'm, I'm a Toronto practitioner, and uh, my website is www.boutteyfamilylaw.com. All right. Well, thank you very much for coming in. An interesting take. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure. Click the channel subscribe button for full-length interviews and more from What She Said here on YouTube.